Stoichiometry is the study of the relationships between any two reactant or product in a chemical reaction. In this video, I'm going to show you six different examples of stoichiometry problems, and I'm going to show you every different possible type of stoichiometry problem. Before we get started, I want to make sure that you understand that when you're doing a stoichiometry problem, you always need to use a balanced chemical equation. You cannot solve a stoichiometry problem without it. Um, and in all the examples that I'm going to do today, I'm going to be providing a balanced equation in the example just so that we can focus on the stoichiometry part of the problem. But when you're solving stoichiometry problems on your own, be aware that sometimes the equation that's provided for you will be unbalanced and you're expected to balance it yourself. Or sometimes the equation is not provided at all and you're expected to figure out what the equation is from some clues or cues in the problem. So let's just jump right in with our first example. In the first example, we're given this balanced equation right here, and we are asked to figure out how many moles of H2 we can make from this specific amount of moles of potassium. So in this problem, we're really being asked to focus on our potassium reactant and our H2 product, and we're trying to form this relationship or study this relationship between these two components of the chemical equation. Now, I like to always think about stoichiometry problems just like some sort of, you know, fancy unit conversion problem. In fact, it's not even fair to call them fancy. They're just regular unit conversion problems. And so when I'm solving a stoichiometry problem, I use exactly the same strategy as I would use to solve any sort of unit conversion problem, like if I asked you to convert one inch into centimeters. Um, what types of steps we would take to solve a problem like that. And so as you know, I always like to start by taking the, the number that has been provided to us, including its units, and writing that down first. That's where I like to start. So for this problem, we are going to be starting out by writing down what we know, which is 0.21 moles of potassium. And like I said, we're treating this like a unit conversion problem, so that means that we want to multiply it by a conversion factor. And we know that we don't want the mole of potassium unit anymore, so we want to put that unit on the bottom of our conversion factor, just like we would in any unit conversion problem. What do we want to put up here in the top? Well, usually this is where we want to put our desired unit. What is our desired unit? In this problem, that's asking what are we trying to figure out? This problem is asking us to figure out how many moles of H2 we can make. So that means that moles of H2 is our desired unit. And in this step, we can cancel out units of moles of potassium and convert right into moles of H2. So the next question is, what is this conversion factor? What is the relationship between these two units? The relationship between these two units comes from the balanced equation, which is why it's necessary that we always have one. So from this balanced equation, we can see that the relationship between potassium and hydrogen is that we have two potassium for every one H2. And that's what we fill into this conversion factor. Two moles of potassium for every one mole of H2. And then here, um, we've actually solved the problem. So we can go ahead and get the calculator out. We don't really need to get the calculator out for a problem like this, but let's just go ahead and do it anyways. Um, we have 0.21 divided by 2. To the correct number of significant figures, this would be 0.11. The units are moles of H2. And it's really just as simple as that. These problems aren't that tricky. So let's take a look at our second example. In this second example, we have a new balanced equation, and we're being asked to calculate how many moles of MgO we can make from our starting amount now is 2.0 grams of magnesium. So again, we want to always start by writing the thing that's provided to us, the thing that we know, which is 2.0 grams of magnesium. 2.0 grams magnesium. And we know that, that um, we want to multiply by a conversion factor that will let us cancel out that unit of grams of magnesium. So we want that down on the bottom. But what about here? What goes up top? Well, you might be thinking moles of magnesium. That's what we're trying to figure out in this problem. So maybe we should be putting moles of MgO on top like that, just like we did in the last problem. But what is this relationship? What's the relationship between moles of magnesium oxide and grams of magnesium? This is a relationship that we don't directly know. We can only go from grams to moles or from moles to grams of the exact same thing. So we can go between 
grams of magnesium into moles of magnesium, but we can't go from grams of one thing into moles of something else. So we can't use this up here. Let's get rid of it. All that we can convert into when we have grams of magnesium or grams of anything, all that we can convert into is moles. And this relationship here is the, um, the atomic weight of magnesium, which we're going to get from the periodic table. So we're going to take a look at the periodic table right now. There's magnesium. I can see it. It's just in that column 2A, and it looks like it's uh, weight is 24.3. So we've got 24.3 grams of magnesium. Now, like a lot of problems that we've seen in the past, this isn't exactly where we want to be. Moles of magnesium is not what we're trying to solve, which means that we just need another step in this conversion. In this step, we need to cancel out moles of magnesium because we don't want this unit. So we're going to put it down here on the bottom. And now we're ready to actually put our desired unit on top, which is the moles of MgO. And this is where I'm going to bring up a really important step uh, in the stoichiometry problem solving process. The only way that we can go from molecule A to molecule B, like in this case from magnesium to magnesium oxide, the only way that we can do that is our mole to mole relationship from the balanced equation. So this mole, we call this a mole to mole conversion using the balanced equation. This is the only way we can go from one substance to another. So uh, for this, what are, the, what are the numbers that go into the conversion factor? Again, we're getting those numbers from the balanced equation. We have two moles of magnesium and we make two moles of magnesium oxide. So we'll fill that in and our moles of magnesium will cancel out. And I do recognize that this last conversion factor that we wrote, it just works out mathematically to be a one, but um, that's pretty unusual. It doesn't always happen like this. So it's important that we always write all these steps down. And so let's go ahead and work the math out on this problem. Two divided by 24.3 is 0 0.082 and our unit is moles of MgO. So that's not too bad. Let's go on to the next example and see what else we have. So our next problem is saying, how many moles of ammonia, NH3, can we make from 16 moles of H2? And we have the balanced equation provided for us. So this is back to one that's pretty straightforward. Start by writing down exactly what we know. We know that we have 16 moles of H2. So we'll start with that. 16 moles of H2. And we want to multiply by a conversion factor that has the units of moles H2 down on the bottom. And we're trying to convert into moles of NH3. So that's the unit that we put up top, moles of NH3. To get the numbers for this conversion factor, we go to the balanced equation. We look at the stoichiometric coefficients. The coefficient for NH3 is 2, and the coefficient for H2 is 3. So this is 2 over 3. And this works out to be 16 times 2 divided by 3. 10.7 moles of NH3. For the next example, we're being asked to calculate grams of O2 from 5 moles of KClO3. So let's start by writing the part that we know. We know that we have 5 moles of KClO3. We know that we do not want that unit anymore, so we'll put that unit down on the bottom. When we have units of moles KClO3, like in this case, we have two options of what we can do up here in the top. We can either convert into grams of KClO3, if that's useful to us, or we can convert into moles of anything else that we want. So at this point, when we're trying to decide what do we put up here, we have to ask ourselves, do we want to know how many grams of KClO3 we have? Is that what the problem is asking us? No, it's not. So that's not what we want. Since we don't want grams of KClO3, that means our only other option is to convert into moles of something. What should we convert into? Probably oxygen, because that's what the problem is asking us to figure out. This is a mole to mole conversion, so that means that we're going to use the coefficients for each one of these molecules. 
the coefficient for O2 is 3, and for KClO2, it's 2. Now, this is not exactly what we're being asked to solve in this problem. We're not being asked to solve for moles of O2. We're being asked to solve for grams of O2. But this is a step that we know of how to take. We want moles of O2 down on the bottom. We want grams of O2 up on top using the uh, molecular weight of O2, 16 grams per mole. And this last step will get us into the units that we want. So now we can do the math, 5 times 3 divided by 2 times 32. We have 240 grams of O2, which is a lot. All right, let's look at, we have two more examples. So for this next example, um, here's another balanced equation. We're being asked to solve for moles of H2O, and we're starting out with 0.75 grams of NaOH. So we want to start by writing down that number that we know. We, want, we know that we have 0.75 grams of NaOH. And when we have grams of NaOH, and we know that that is not our desired unit, so whenever we have grams of NaOH, our only option is to convert into moles um, of that substance. So grams, whenever we're starting with grams of anything, our first step is always going to be converting straight into moles of that exact same sub substance using the uh, molecular weight of NaOH, which is 40 grams per mole. One mole is 40 grams. Now we are not trying to figure out how many moles of NaOH we have. We're trying to figure out moles of H2O. So that just means that we're not done. We need moles of NaOH down on the bottom. When we have moles of NaOH on the bottom, our only options up here are to convert into grams of NaOH or to convert into moles of anything else, whatever we want. Do we want to convert into grams of NaOH in this problem? We actually don't. That's what we started with. We definitely don't want to go back to that. So that means that it's time for us to do a mole-to-mole -mole conversion. What should we convert into? Let's look at what the problem is asking us to solve. We're trying to figure out moles of H2O. So here we have a mole-to-mole -mole conversion. We are going to take the stoichiometric coefficients from the balanced equation, 2 to 2. Here's another example where mathematically it's just 1, but this is a really important step. We don't want to skip it. Moles of H2O, that is what the problem is asking us to solve. So that means that we have all of the math done and we're ready to just use the calculator and get the answer to this problem. 0.75 divided by 40. It looks like our answer is 0 0.019 moles of H2O. So we have one more example left, and this is actually the hardest possible example of a stoichiometry problem. We're trying to figure out grams of CH4 from grams of CBr4. Notice that when I'm solving these problems, I'm not even really reading them at all. I don't even look at the scenario in the problem. I'm just looking for the essential numbers. I'm looking for what I'm starting with, and I'm looking at what it's asking me to figure out. And whatever the story might be is not relevant for this type of problem. So I'm starting by writing down my 4.5 grams of CBr4, and I know that that um, is not the unit I want, so I'm creating a conversion factor that has grams of CBr4 down on the bottom. And I know that when I'm starting out with grams of something, the only option that I have is to convert into moles of that exact same thing. So this is the only possible step that we can be taking at this point. And this relationship is the molecular weight of CBr4, which I don't know off the top of my head. So that means I do need to calculate it um, from the weight of each one of those atoms. Bromine atoms weigh 80 grams per mole a piece, so that's 320 plus a 12. This guy is 332. What a heavy molecule. So that's going to cancel that unit out. And I know that I'm not trying to figure out how many moles of CBr4 I have, so that means that I'm not done. I need to keep going with this problem. Um, and I want moles of CBr4 down on the bottom. Now when I have a conversion factor that has moles on the bottom, my only options for the top are grams of that exact same thing, which I don't want to do because that's where I started or I can convert into moles of something else. 
So this is definitely what we want to do. Convert into moles of something else. And what should that something else be? In this case, it should be CH4 because that's what we're trying to figure out. So we'll go to our balanced equation to get the coefficients for this particular conversion factor. Again, it's a one to one. Even though I told you it doesn't happen very often, it's happened three times. So uh, moles of CH4 is, again, not the unit that we want. So we want moles of CH4 down on the bottom. When we have moles of CH4 down on the bottom, if I feel like I feel like I'm a broken record, but that means maybe you'll maybe what I'm saying sinks in. If we have moles of CH4 down on the bottom, our only options are to convert into grams of CH4, which is, oh wait, that's exactly what we want. So grams of CH4. The only other option is to convert into moles of something else. And this step is going to be using the molecular weight of CH4, which is 16 grams per mole. This step cancels out here. And our unit that we are left with is grams of CH4, which is perfect. So let's do the math. 4.5 divided by 332 times 16. We get 0.22 grams of CH4. And again, that is showing you every possible type of stoichiometry problem that you might encounter.